everybody, so we did this thing, which was a freewheel in video 1855, we looked at a ratchet. Then in 1856 we did this, which is a clutch bearing, and you'll notice I've got a gear tooth on it. Then in 1859 we did this, which is a serpentine coil. Now I quite like to do them in separate parts like that, because say you want to make a serpentine coil for a wind turbine, which would be brilliant, you don't want to go watching a tedious video with the fat boy from Kent blathering on about freewheels. So you can get it just straight from that video. Of course, you then think, well, okay, I've got that, now what do I do with it? And of course, things like wind turbines, water wheels, bicycle generators, blah, 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 blah. Brilliant, because it's so easy to make, so quick to make, and gives a really good result. And we're going to use it with our freewheel and our clutch in a pull cord generator. So to do a pull cord generator, of course, what I need is some kind of cradle, and I've printed up a cradle here, and I've printed up a ridiculous cog, this cog's three to one with this here, and I've printed up a pulley. And what we're going to do is just slot all those bits together. So let's do a little bit of slotting, shall we? Okay, there it is together, and it really is just a matter of slotting it together. Now, I've put this up on Tinkercad. It's called Flywheel Light. So if you want to jump over to Tinkercad if you want all of this, you're quite welcome to it. And as I say, I've just slotted those together for the details of some of this. See those earlier videos. Now, all I've done for it is stuck on four lamps. Four light bulbs sitting in a row there. And at the moment, here's the wires off the generator, and we're just going to clip straight to those lamps. We still need a little bit of electronics in this to make everything stable, but we're going to test whether it actually works or not. So let me just clip this up. <laughs> Quite a bit of fun, actually. And then we'll get our pull cord, which is right here, and give it a pull. <laughs> so if you jump over to Tinkercad, this is what you'll see. Actually, they're laid out. But this is it put together to help you see how it's built. Now, here is the cradle here in blue and, well, best described as fuchsia, I suppose. You see there's a big hole there. That big hole is where the bearing goes, and this is where an 8mm axle goes through that gear and pulley. Here there's no hole because the axle, which is 8mm again, goes straight into the body of the cradle. Now the cradle is arranged in two axles, so you can see here it's got this big cog, and here we've got it engaging in the little clutch one-way gear here. This is a 3 to 1 ratio, so that's three times the size of that. Remains is, every time you turn this once, this will turn three times. And there is the pull cord pulley directly attached to that axle, directly attached to that cog. So you pull the pulley, spins the cog, spins that three times as fast, and then spins that. This is where the weight goes. The free weight goes here on this orange bit, and then the magnets get slotted in these holes here. This, purple and fuchsia, is the uh, coil. So that's the coil arrangement that we made. Let's take this apart so we have a better look at it. If we take away the cradle, there we go. Now we can see the two axles there. This one is the big cog we just talked about. So let's move that away. There's the pulley we just talked about. And there is the 8mm axle. Now these are spacers and they clearly go along the axle to keep the cog and pulley in registration to each other. This is the flat plate that we looked at in the previous video for making the cog, uh, the coil, and this is the coil former. So if we spin that round you can see that the coil itself wraps around those former bars and that plate there goes on top to complete your coil. Now your coil gets glued to this plate here, so it's fixed to that plate, it can't move. This is the moving bit. Here is the bit that we put the free weight on. So the free weight goes on that thick bit there, and the magnets go in that bit there, and it all goes on this axle here. And here is where we've got our clutch arrangement. So that is the clutch. So that has little steel bars in at 6mm, or you can print them if you like, and then it slides into this, which all goes on that axle there. Now, here, you'll notice there's a great big hole, and that's because a bearing goes in there, and a bearing goes in there, and a bearing goes in there, and a bearing goes in there. 
that little peg slots into here to fix that. So these are able to spin freely on their own bearings and that's why this goes straight into here. And that's how the thing breaks down and is put together. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Right, the electrics, this is it really, your generator creates some kind of wildly variable output and the first thing you need to do is convert that AC into DC and that's usually done with a rectifier and then of course because it's up and down everywhere what you need to do is regulate it and there's probably about a million ways of regulating it with loads of people having their own ideas but the easiest way is to buy a voltage regulator they're like a few pence on eBay or Amazon and you just put that in series with it and there's a little diagram with pluses and minuses to show you where to do it. And then that goes to your battery or supercapacitor or your storage device where you're going to actually store it. So that's the logic of it. Now, to actually implement that, here's an idea. We've got the generator output going through those four diodes that you can see D1 to D4 and that's a rectifier bridge, it's a full wave rectifier bridge. Then we've got a couple of smoothing capacitors and there is the voltage regulator and I used an LM2940. It's just a chip you can buy and that goes to the battery or supercapacitor. Now it's a very basic design, loads of ways. If you do a real wind turbine you'll find MPPT or pulse width modulation or whatever. But that will do the job just fine and it's the basics of what you need. And if you were to implement this using three phase, what you can see there in the regulator a rectifier section is a three-phase regulator then that, sorry a three-phase rectifier then we have the regulator and then that goes to the battery of course this is from uh, a motorbike actually and so it has an ignition switch to kick everything in but that's all there is to it and we return back to the logic we need to implement that logic implementing it is really off the shelf. The love of them. Watching the lights flicker. And of course the lights are on now and this uh, wheel isn't turning and there's a reason for that. Obviously, although it's great to pull it, it was noisy and effectively what you're doing with the pull cord is just like you do with the crank handle. We've stored some energy. The lights are actually working from the energy stored in these two capacitors. So when the flywheel is zipping around, it's generating. It's then going through, uh, we've got a bridge rectifier right there. That bridge rectifier is going to this voltage regulator. That's charging those two supercapacitors. So those two supercapacitors now get a ton of energy in them. And now it's been fed back to the lights, and so the lights don't flicker, and they stay on when this flywheel is no longer turning. And given the noise we got, that's kind of handy, really, if you think about it. When the... Um, Lights begin to dim, of course we wrap our pull cord around it and give it another couple of pulls to charge those capacitors up. But there you go, a pull cord generator light set for emergency lighting that anybody could build. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.